So we have discussed a very important topic today. We have discussed this many times, but I see there's so much confusion. So we need to clear this at the earliest because this is one of the most important fundamentals of judging a horoscope. So if we make a mistake in this, then it's like we take a wrong route and then we end up to another destination, right? So that's the topic today. Difference between the moon nakshatra, which is known as nakshatra or rather janma nakshatra and the lagna nakshatra, right? So many times people will ask, uh, which nakshatra is more important? Is the moon nakshatra more important? Because that tells you how we see things from the mind or is the lagna nakshatra more important? Because that tells you how you see things, uh, how, what what actually happens, not how we see things, sorry, what actually happens, right? So, this is where we go wrong. When we try to compare one nakshatra with the other. Now, there's nothing wrong in comparing, but we should not compare the importance because every nakshatra is equally important. Now, of course, traditionally in Vedic astrology, they say that uh, the Janma nakshatra is the nakshatra of the moon, but it doesn't mean uh, your Surya nakshatra, your Shani nakshatra, your Shukra or Buddha nakshatra is not important. Okay, Surya nakshatra means the nakshatra where your sun is sitting, right? Now, why do I say this? Because, see, you have to understand what is moon nakshatra. Why is it called Janma nakshatra? Because the moon is the mind, Manas. Chandrama Manaso Jataha, that is the shloka. So, what is the sun basically? If you want to understand the nakshatra of the moon, you have to first understand the sun. Without that, you cannot understand moon's nakshatra. All right. So, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your career, marriage, health, or nakshatras, please go to my website down in the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. So the sun represents the kingdom. Kingdom means what are the things that we own. A king owns something, right? So now this is a laptop where I am recording this um, video. So it's like I am the king and this laptop is part of my kingdom, right? This table, this microphone... And uh, this chair where I'm sitting, right? But is this house where I'm sitting, is it a part of my kingdom? Well, no, because it's on rent and I'm renting this. I have not purchased this house, right? So this is not part of my kingdom. Uh, maybe it's temporarily a part of my kingdom till the time I'm renting it, right? So anyways, so sun can represent the things, the ideals, the beliefs, the money, uh, the property, the vehicles or whatever, anything that we own in this world is under the planet sun, right? But then comes the moon. The moon tells us how do we feel about the things that we own? Because we may own a number of things, but how do we feel about it? Are we happy? Do we feel good about it or about them? Or are we not so happy? What is our relationship with the things that we own right because we may own a lot of things but do we like them actually or do they like us back is there a healthy reciprocative relationship or is it just one way right either we like the things that we own or the things that we own like us back but we don't like them right so the moon tells us about our interactions within our kingdom right and that is actually the feel-good factor. So, a good sun and a bad moon is like a situation where you have a lot of things, but you are not happy. So, you feel as if you do not have anything, right? All the things that you own are as good as uh, not owning them, right? So, that's the moon, basically. And then comes the moon nakshatra. So, the moon nakshatra tells you how you view the things that you have in this world. Right. So, for example, if uh, your moon nakshatra is Ashwini, the first nakshatra, 
then you might always be obsessed with creating new things, right? You may be obsessed with starting things but not taking into completion. Big problem with Ashwini there. So therefore, now you know how to look at the whole scope. Because imagine a person has uh, too many planets in Artha houses. For example, I'm telling you, which are the Artha houses? The second, sixth, and the tenth, right? And the eleventh house is also the house of prophets, although it's a Kama house, but it's the house of fulfillment of desire. So you can also take the eleventh house for this example. So if a person asks you, uh, okay, sir, I have this job and, you know, what should I do? Should I do business or should I uh, be self-employed? Should I uh, look for, you know, some side hustle or freelancing or whatever? Or should I leave my job and do full-time business or self-employment? So what do you answer? Of course, you can see the horoscope. But imagine this person has his moon in Ashwini. Then you know that this person has a habit of jumping to new things. The person is obsessed about jumping to new things. So then you really have to check the horoscope very carefully before you give him a suggestion in, in regards to his career. Because if he asks you that, sir, what career will I be in? Uh, what career will I do good for the next 40 years? You might have to tell the person, my dear sir, <laughs> it doesn't seem likely that you will be in the same career for 40 years. Now, of course, you can say that, oh, yeah, nowadays, you know, people change career. So is it more like Desh Kal Patra based? Is it time, place, circumstances based? Because if you go back 100 years, uh, people would not change their jobs, right? Now, mostly they would not. But nowadays, you know, they, they may change. May not be very frequently, but still they have a lot of job change, right? So yes, Deshkal Patra applies. So in today's context, um, if somebody has a prominent Ashwini, then it is, it is even more probable that they will be hopping from one job to the other, right? And especially if Moon is their uh, sixth lord or, you know, Lagna lord, then this can happen more, right? So... You got to understand that if somebody has Moon in Ashwini and then the person has uh, a query regarding to his profession for the next 40 years, you, you, you have to check multiple things. Multiple things in the sense you have to see what are the interest areas for the person. What are the things that this person is interested in because he may keep changing his profession depending on the horoscope of course. I'm not generalizing, but I'm saying the probability is on the higher end. So you need to check it more carefully, right? Now comes the Ascendant Akshatra, the Lagna Akshatra. The Lagna Akshatra can tell you uh, certain events that happen in your life, right? So if you're in, so instead of your Moon Akshatra, if your Lagna Akshatra is Ashwini, then it can happen that irrespective of who you are, what you are, Things can happen very fast in your life. Or things can demand more initiation from you rather than maintenance, right? So now if uh, now if you uh, consult a person who has Lagna in Ashwini and then you uh, he comes to you for a career consultation, he tells you, you know, sir, what, what career should I be in? Then you have to tell this person that because your Lagna is in Ashwini, it is highly likely that either you like it or you don't. You want it or you don't. You feel like or you don't feel like. Things will go at a higher pace. So that means if somebody has uh, Ashwini as the Lagna Nakshatra or the 6th Lord or the 10th Lord's Nakshatra, then the person has to constantly upgrade himself with the latest up-to-date uh, concepts and technologies. Not IT, but it can be anything, right? Why? Because things will change rapidly. So then it may be difficult for him to adapt to some other profession if he's not competent enough, right? He may be uh, thrown off from his job, unfortunately. So therefore, you have to understand that Lagna Nakshatra represents those things 
which will come to you by default. Either you like it or you don't. But when it comes to the moon nakshatra, you have a free will to decide to what extent uh, will you go. Because the moon deals with the interests and the mind. So what is the mind? The mind is the, it's like, you know, the seat of desires, unfulfilled desires, fulfilled desires, um, habits, previous experiences, right? Good and bad, both. So therefore, the moon nakshatra has everything stored. And depending on that, it is decided what you will like in this life or you, know, you will not like. Now, when I say decided, it's not fatalistic, but it's essentially who we are, right? That's what the moon nakshatra is. And the ascendant nakshatra has to be seen in relation to the moon nakshatra, right? So, as I said, if a person has moon in Ashwini, the person may want to change professions or if their Artha house lords are in Ashwini. But if a person's Artha house lords or the Lagna nakshatra is in Ashwini, the person will have to. That, that's how it is, right? Either you like it or you don't. Now, maybe the moon uh, is in a particular nakshatra. And the person may like changing jobs, may like initiating new things, or, person, or the person may not like it. But irrespective of the fact he or she likes it, they have to do it because that's uh, that's what the lagna is, right? So therefore, it's very important that you first see the moon nakshatra. You see what the person likes and then you see what is the lagna nakshatra because that will tell you the things that can inevitably turn out in his life. Then you try to come to a conclusion by seeing the nature of both the things. So first you see what he likes, then what he needs to do. Right. So for example, if a person uh, likes creativity, for example, but the Lagna Nakshatra is in Ashwini, so he has to change his profession. You know? So you can see which talents are associated with the fifth house. Because, and especially in the Navamsa, right? Because the person will have to frequently uh, look for new talents, right? Or what kind of skills can the person have, right? What is there in the Navamsa trines that you can see? Then you can update the person accordingly, all right? So, therefore, do not think uh, that this nakshatra is more important or that nakshatra is important. But the interesting thing, that's the beauty of astrology, that we have to find out a balance between these two nakshatras, right? Because at times, if these two nakshatras are totally contrary in behavior and traits, then it can happen that the person's life is very miserable because the person is inevitably forced to do certain things because of his lagna nakshatra, but is not inherently wanting to do these because of his moon nakshatra, right? So then as an astrologer, it is our duty to give a solution in such a way that the person can do certain things which he has to do inevitably because of the Lagna Nakshatra uh, in a way which suits his interests and uh, likes right, and keeps aside his dislikes to whatever extent possible. That's the most important job of an astrologer. And once we do that, then we can not only suggest good career for the person which may or may not be very important I mean which is important of course because that's why the person is asking but if you suggest a career for a person without looking into the both the nakshatras and both the nakshatras means without harmonizing both the moon nakshatra and the lagna nakshatra you can end up giving suggestions which may be good for either one of the nakshatras. So, for example, Lagna nakshatra is in Ashwini. So, you give suggestion. Oh, yeah, yeah, you should keep changing careers. And then this person has moon in another nakshatra which says, you know, don't change professions. Stay where you are. So, then he'll be miserable for the rest of 30, 40 years of his profession, right? Because... He will do things which he absolutely hates, which he has to do inevitably, right? So, of course, at the end, karma decides. But as astrologers, it is our duty to 
help people to come to a consensus and that is why they come to us right all right i hope this has cleared some misconceptions and uh, especially things like you know which is more important how much the like once a lady had asked me you know how much percentage should we give importance to the moon nakshatra how much percentage should we give importance to the lagna nakshatra i said you have to give both a 100 percent and she was like what the hell is that <laughs> how is it possible that we give 100 percent to both because in their own respective zones they are 100 percent right now either it is in comparison or whatever you uh you see this or that in youtube but there is no percentage you cannot compare the moon nakshatra with the lagna nakshatra. It will land you in a disaster if you do it. Not only moon and lagna, you cannot compare the sun nakshatra and the moon nakshatra, right? And you cannot compare your um, any nakshatra with any other nakshatra. You cannot compare. Understand everywhere in their own areas, they are like kings. They decide, right? So therefore, do not get into this calculation business. Right. Instead of doing that, you know, finding percentages, try to see how you can study both of them 100%, which is actually easy to be honest. The more, the challenging part is not the percentage. Challenging part is how to see uh, the final result, right? Because see, you have the moon nakshatra, then you have lagna nakshatra. Then you also have the dashas, right? You have mahadasha, antar dasha. Pratyantara I am excluding as of now. So what if somebody has moon in Shatvisha Nakshatra and you know Lagna is in Ashwini. So you know the nature now of Shatvisha and Ashwini, right? But maybe he's running, you know, Jupiter Mahadasha and Jupiter is in Purva Bhadrapada, for example, right? And maybe he's running Saturn Antardasha. Saturn is sitting in Revati Nakshatra, right? So how do you give a prediction? Should you tell him, okay, you know, this year you should do this, you know, next year that. So every year doesn't mean he will keep changing. Well, no, that's not how it is to be done, right? So then that is why the most important thing is to do a comprehensive analysis where you find all the nakshatras and try to see the final music, right? So it's like an orchestra. It's like a symphony, right? Where everybody is playing their own uh, instruments, but in a way that the end result is beautiful. Imagine everybody is playing just to satisfy their ego and then, you know, uh, the audience is wondering what the hell is going on. This is like a nuisance, all right? So that's like hell. So do not make uh, that mistake to give more importance to one nakshatra over the other. Of course, if there are specific queries, then you have to see specific planets and specific nakshatras. But... Overall, understand that every every nakshatra is important because there is some planet sitting there. And when some planet is sitting there, it shows karma associated to that. It shows human behavior, human nature, and destined events. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, please go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up and share it with your family, friends, relatives, colleagues, and everybody else. Thank you.